Welcome to Holly EFI Training Part 12. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at setting up our advanced inputs in our Holly EFI software. So in the previous video, we took a look at setting up our basic sensor inputs, our map pressure, throttle position sensor, intake air, engine coolant temperature. These are going to be the core sensor inputs that we have to have to do our tuning process with. Now we can bring more sensors into our Holly using our custom inputs. So we can take any zero to five volt sensor, zero to 20 volt sensors, thermistor style sensors, which are temp sensors, wheel speed sensors, and we're able to wire them into our Holly and then configure them into our software so that we can use them for data logging purposes or in our advanced tuning section as we're gonna get into later in the training course, be able to define tables using our custom inputs. There's gonna be a lot of things to cover in this video. So let's jump in so we can check out how to work with our advanced inputs. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our inputs into our Holly HP and Dominator systems. Now, in the previous video, we took a look at setting up our basic inputs right here under our sensor configuration. Um, we find we have our map pressure, coolant temp, manifold air temp, oil and fuel pressure. So these are the five core inputs that we always wanna have wired into the HP or Dominator systems we're gonna be working with. The first three here, map, coolant temp, and manifold air temp, these are all used in fuel and spark timing calculations. So we absolutely have to have these three always set up and configure. Oil and fuel pressure are gonna be additional sensors that are nice to have. We don't necessarily have to have them. I would recommend at the very least always having fuel pressure. That's gonna be a vital part in making sure that your fuel delivery is gonna be correct. And oil pressure obviously is a, an essential for any engine. You have low oil pressure that can create huge issues, uh, damage the motor, completely ruin the engine. So we wanna always keep track of that. So these are gonna be the five that I always work with, whether it's an HP or Dominator system, I always make sure that the car is gonna have this information here set up and configured and wired in. Now, in addition to this, we have various other inputs that we need to know how to configure. So if we wanna go and just do a basic toggle switch to turn something on in our Holly, we need to know how to go and assign that and make that work. And then if we wanna bring in some additional sensors, if we're taking a look at something like exhaust pressure or coolant pressure or oil temperature or flex fuel signals from a flex fuel sensor, so we wanna maybe do flex fuel control, um, or if we wanna take a look at setting up a vehicle speed sensor or even wheel speed sensors, there's gonna be all kinds of things that we need to know and set up in order to make that work. So that's what we're gonna introduce in this video here. So let's first and foremost jump in here to system ICF. And you're going to find as you move down here, we're going to go into our setting here, basic IO. This is our basic input outputs that we have in our Holly software. So we can see something like fans, pumps, AC. This is going to be when we are taking a look at outputs. Uh, we're looking at our air conditioning here. The IAC kick or the AC shutdown is going to actually be a switch we have to wire in. That would be an input. But the fuel pump and electric fans, these are going to be an output. If we're taking a look at something like our timing retard, this would be set up on an activation input. We'd have to set up a switch for that. Data logging here, we have to set up on a basic toggle switch, on off switch, or a momentary switch. And then finally under, under staging, we would also have to set up an input for this. So let's just demonstrate this real quick. If I go in and I wanna go in, let's just go to our timing retard. If I click on timing retard one, we can say activate with input here, or say activate it input release. That's gonna be the difference of setting this up. We'll talk about timing retard function in, in another video. Just This is gonna be just the switch setup here. So we're going to understand how this is going to work. So when I click timing retards on, it knows it's looking for a particular input. It's going to be my job to actually wire it in and set it up and configure it. So in order to do that, we'll go to input outputs. Now notice when I toggle that feature on here, it's going to be bringing it live under timing retard number one. This is going to be our system inputs. So that list that we were just taking a look at here, all of our different various things that we could turn on and configure, those are going to be in our inputs outputs. We can see they're predefined. So rev limit one, two, AC kick, timing retard one through three, ECU logic trigger, and then staging input one and two. This is where we actually configure the switch inputs. So in this situation, we're gonna have two different ways we can switch and toggle on a- Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.